In previous videos, we saw how in multiple regression we could use dummy coding to test a dichotomous categorical predictor, something that indicates whether someone was in one of two groups. But what if we have a categorical predictor that's more than just two groups? Something like race or ethnicity that may be three or four or five or more groups. In this video, we'll start our discussion on how to use dummy coding when we have more than two groups. So this starts to take us into kind of more of the classical categorical variables that can have several different categories within them. And for this example, let's say I want to see whether there are differences in SAT verbal scores based on four different academic programs. Are students in a standard academic program? Or a, do they have a math-focused curriculum or a language-focused curriculum? Or are, some just, are they just in an all-around intensive curriculum? So there's our four groups. Now, notice that academic program is a categorical variable. These groups have no, they don't reflect any different scores across the number line. There, there's no inherent order or values for any of these. They're just four distinct groups or categories. So I went ahead and I've made some simulated data for this example based on these groups and let's take a look at that. Okay, here we have the mean verbal SAT scores for these four groups. Notice that in this simulated data, we have exactly 100 students in each group. And the scores do look a little different from each other, don't they? Uh, ranging from 460 for the standard curriculum up to almost 541 for the math-focused curriculum. But those differences could just reflect random sampling error, right? Now, if we ignore multiple regression for a moment, and I want to test whether the population means for these four groups are equal uh, based on these samples, what test would I do? I have four groups, a continuous outcome variable, I could do an ANOVA, right? A one-way analysis of variance. And in fact, if it was this simple, I probably would just do an ANOVA. But again, we're going to see why there's benefits or what you can gain potentially if you do this through regression. So let's first run an ANOVA on this data, just like we did back in intro stats, and see what we find before we go on and do this in regression. So here's the ANOVA analysis, and it tells us that the means for these four populations are probably not equal, with an F with 3 and 396 degrees of freedom, equal to 4.642 and a p-value of 0 0.003. Now remember with the ANOVA, it doesn't tell us which of the groups are different. It just tells us that they're not all the same. All right, great. But at the same time, that may be a little dissatisfying, wouldn't it? I mean, it would be nice to know which of the groups were different, wouldn't it? So let's now see exactly how we would do this same problem in multiple regression using dummy coding. So we have four categories. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to create three dummy variables for the three for three of these programs with the dummy variables coded as 0 or 1, indicating that a student belongs to that specific group or not. So I'm going to make one dummy variable that indicates a child is in the math focus curriculum. And I'm going to make a second dummy variable that indicates that they're in the language focused curriculum. And a third dummy variable that indicates that they're in the intensive curriculum. And for each of these three dummy variables, 
everybody has either a value of zero, meaning nope, not in that program, or a value of one, meaning yes, uh, I'm in that program, all right? So every child's gonna have three variables indicating am I in the math focus program? Am I in the language focus program? And am I in the intensive curriculum? And notice, just like we saw when we used a one dummy variable to code two groups, we're using three dummy variables to code four groups. That last group doesn't need a dummy variable. If you're not in the math focus curriculum and you're not in the language focus curriculum and you're not in the intensive curriculum, what's left? You must be in the standard curriculum. Students in the standard curriculum are identified by the fact that they are all zeros in all of the three other dummy variables. In that sense, a fourth dummy variable would be redundant. It wouldn't add anything. And as we'll see later, this group, our all zeros group, will be our referent or comparison group. Okay, so here's what the data would look like. Again, every student has all three variables and they'll have values on all three variables, all right? Now, let's start with Keith. He's in the math focus program, so how would that be coded? Well, we just go one by one by one for each of the three dummy codes and ask, is Keith in this group? If the answer is yes, we code it one. If the answer is no, we code it zero. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can complete this table all on your own. Restart the video when you're ready. Okay, let's see how you did. We'll start with Keith. Keith would answer yes for being in the math focus curriculum, but he's not in the language focus curriculum and he's not in the intensive curriculum. So he would be coded as 100, right? Next is Lori. She was in the language focus curriculum, so she would be no for math, but yes for language and no for intensive. So that would be 010. Zero, zero. Then Danny, he's in the intensive curriculum. So that's a no for math, no for language, but yes for intensive, which would be coded as 001. And finally, we have Chris, who was in the standard curriculum. So he would be no for math, no for language, no for intensive. That codes as 000, all right? So that's how you would dummy code academic program. Now, this next bit is very important. This set of three variables is the academic program effect. The three of them together form their own construct academic program. All right, let's actually flash this a little bit for emphasis, right? The academic program isn't a single variable. It's made up of three variables as a set, as a team. They're like the three musketeers. The Three Musketeers is more than just Porthos alone. A, a single musketeer does not the Three Musketeers make. The same principle applies here. If you want to look at or analyze or interpret or test academic program, you must look at or analyze or interpret all three variables together as a set. If you only use one of these, you're not looking at academic program. Uh, for example, if you just use the math-focused dummy code, you'd be examining the difference between math-focused programs and all other programs pooled or lumped together. It would make no distinction between language-focused and intensive curriculum and standard curriculum at all they'd all just be 
pooled and lumped together. And that's not academic program, is it? That's just math focused or not math focused. No academic program, as we've described it, is all three as a set. Statistically, you have to control for all of the other levels of the categorical variable by including all three dummy variables in order to fully capture the four groups that make up academic program. Now, the language here can get a little blurry uh, because researchers and research articles will talk about things like academic program as a variable. And it is, if you think of it as a construct of academic program. But in that case, remember, it's a variable that's made up of three variables. Or you can think of it as a construct, or I guess a variable made up of three dummy codes, if, if that helps. All right? Now, Let's move on. Let's take those dummy variables that we've just made and we'll run our multiple regression analysis. All right. So here are the descriptive statistics for the outcome, verbal SAT scores, and our three dummy variables. Remember the dummy variable is the percentage of the students in each of those groups. So keep in mind the N of 400 isn't how many students are in each group, it's the total number of students in the analysis, right? And that means, the, these means tell us that 25% of the 400 students are in the math curriculum and 25% of the 400 students are in the language curriculum and 25% are in the intensive curriculum. But notice, <laughs> we're missing the standard curriculum because we don't have a variable for that final group, right? But it's just 1 minus 0.25 minus 0.25 minus 0.25 where that tells us that 25% must be in the standard curriculum, right? Because it all adds up to 100% of the students. So you have to kind of derive it that way. Now, Here's the ANOVA table from our regression analysis. We have three dummy variables and an N of 400. So we have an F with 3 and 396 degrees of freedom equal to 4.642, which is statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.003. So academic program has a significant effect, right? The means of these in their four populations are not all equal. Now, notice that because the academic program effect involves three variables, we have to test it using an F-test. An F-test it allows us to examine the effect of multiple variables at the same time. Uh, remember in the ANOVA table, it's, it's testing all of the variables in the model. In this case, that's all three of the academic dummy variables. So this F test is the test for the academic program effect in this case. Now, let me also put up the ANOVA table that we previously ran, um, you, you know, the one-way analysis of variance. Let's take a look at these. Notice that the numbers are the same, right? I mean, the only difference between our multiple regression ANOVA table and the one-way analysis of variance ANOVA table is kind of what we're calling the sum of squares, right? In the multiple regression, we're referring to them as the regression and residual sum of squares but they're labeled the between groups and within groups sum of squares in when we did the one-way ANOVA. <laughs> but it's the same thing. The numbers are all exactly the same. And there's something else here that's really kind of cool. Remember back in intro stats when we learned the one-way ANOVA, 
how did we determine the between groups degrees of freedom? That three over there, right? It was the number of groups minus one. In this case, we have four groups. So the between groups degrees of freedom is four minus one or three. But now, looking at it from a regression perspective, we can see a deeper reason for why it's the number of groups minus one. Because that's how many variables we need in order to code a given number of groups. It's the number of groups minus one. <laughs> Pretty cool. And even if you don't literally make dummy variables when you're calculating an F in a one-way ANOVA, we're still using three variables worth of information when we're partitioning the sum of squares into the between and within components. Remember, we're still calculating group means and deviations from group means. And that, in essence, requires three variables worth of information in order to get those means. It's just a little more hidden, a little more black box in ANOVA than it is in multiple regression where we literally make these three variables. And each variable, whether it's the literal variable like a dummy code or a variable's worth of information, each of those require one degree of freedom. All right, now let's keep going. Also in regression, remember we get the model summary table or whatever they call it in different software, but it's where we see the R squared. And here we see that academic program, that set of all three dummy variables, accounts for 3.4% of the variance in verbal SAT scores. And we right, know that that's statistically significant from the ANOVA table we just saw, all right? Now, why don't we wrap up this video here? In our next video, we'll take a close look at the coefficients table and how we interpret the regression coefficients. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.